Today we're going to talk about epithelium and glands. We want to identify the epithelium and different tissue types to uh, differentiate the mucus and serous uh, secreting epithelium. We want to identify the endocrine versus the exocrine glands. Uh, we want to uh, do a detailed analysis of the sebaceous gland, glands, and ducts, uh, which uh, to carry out their secretions. Finally, we want to talk about the myoepithelium, what their function, and where they be located, like the eye, for example. Enjoy. Hi, this is Larry Johnson from Texas A&M University, and we'll be talking about epithelium and glands. We want to identify the epithelium present in any type of tissue we see, differentiate between mucus and serous, identify single cell glands, endocrine glands, exocrine glands, detailed structure of the sebaceous gland, identify the different types of sweat glands, and also myoepithelial cells and their function. Now, the origin of epithelial cells are from three basic uh, germ cell lines. You get the ectoderm, the epidermis of the skin, uh, the cornea of the eye comes from the ectoderm, sebaceous glands, mammary glands, tear glands, they come from the ectoderm on the outside. Uh, from the endoderm you got the GI tract. GI tract comes delivered to the pancreas. Also the endocrine glands, they lose their contact with the wall and they become endocrine cells, connected tissue surface. They, they no longer connect to the surface, so they don't discharge on the surface. As a consequence, they are endocrine cells. Uh, mesoderm, mesoderm in the middle, you get endothelium, which lines blood vessels, and mesothelium, which lines the peritoneal cavity. So, uh, epithelium comes from all three germ cell layers. Now, if epithelium has different shapes, you can classify them based on their shape. If it's a single cell layer, we call it simple, one layer. If it's more than one, we call it stratified, simple or stratified. Or it could be pseudo-stratified, namely it looks like it's more than one layer, but all of them touch the base. So pseudo-stratified, usually columnar epithelium. And then you classify the cells at the surface. Are they flattened? If they are, they're squamous. Are they cubes, little squares? They're, then they're cuboidal. Are there columns? Is there more cytoplasm above the nucleus than they are between nuclei? Then there are columnar. So there are different ones. This is stratified squamous. Simple, squamous. Stratified columnar, more than one layer, columnar. And then we have transitional. In the laboratory exercise today, we we'll identify and characterize various types of epithelium, recognize the various glands and modes of secretion, and recognize the glands associated with structures in different glands. We want to understand the significant cytological expression of epithelial cells with regard to their function. What does the different types do? Here we see stratified squamous epithelium. Uh, that's a protective type of epithelium. Here we see, this is transitional epithelium, uh, this is in the urinary uh, tract. Here we see pseudostratified columnar epithelium with very long uh, microvilli projected on the surface, these are stereocilia. Now one characteristic of the epithelium is it sits on a basement membrane, and here we can see that with this uh, kind of red pink line that goes through here, really magenta uh, line. Uh, and we can see that with a periodic acid shift reaction that identifies uh, locations of sugars uh, uh, in there and the shift reactions uh, turns uh, the sugar structures into a pink or magenta color. Uh, and we can see the, the basement membrane as we see around through. Also, in this case, uh, in the kidney, which is what this is, in the proximal tubule they have a brush border. A brush border is composed of numerous microvilli, uniform size, which increases surface area for absorption of nutrients, uh, in the case of a kidney absorption of proteins and things that you need to get back into the bloodstream. The structure of a brush border stains with a periodic acid shift because of the glycocalyx. 
So on the microvilli you have a fuzzy coat uh, which is a glycocalyx and we can see that here. It's an electron microscopic view of the brush border. Brush border composed of individual a microvilli of all uniform length and surrounding those is a glycocalyx and we can see the glycocalyx is what uh, causes this kind of pinkish color uh, in the center of these things so you're actually covering the sugars in the glycocalyx not the microvilli uh, themselves. Now the brush border is composed of numerous microvilli of uniform size projecting into the lumen. There's a lumen up there, there's the opening. Each microvillus is composed of microfilaments, and we can see those microfilaments here, and you can see those microfilaments running down through here. Actin filaments surrounded by the cell membrane, and here you can see the uh, lipid bilayer of the cell membrane, and located on the outside of the fuzzy coat is the glycocalyx, which is PAS uh, positive staining. Stereocilia is found in the epididymis and in the ductus deferens, very long branch, non-modal, microvilli, which is very long, and they increase absorption from the lumen. There are epithelium, characteristic epithelium, it makes a sheet, it makes a lumen, and it does that by a series of junctions. In addition, uh, the junctions facilitate communication between adjacent cells, and here we see a gap junction gap is uniform distance between two different cells. The gap is uniform throughout, that's how it gets its name, but actually uh, this has to do with communication between, uh, between the different cells. Uh, also, uh, next to the lumen, if it's a lumen up here, uh, this is a brush border or microvilli projecting up, you have the zone occlutens, zone adherents, and then the macular adherents. So these series make a terminal bar, as we'll see in a minute. And in fact, it's these junctions that make polarized epithelium. Epithelium functionally and structurally polarized, that is, it has a lumen and it has a base. And the, the basement membrane, of which the basal lamina is part of, is PAS staining. But if you look at the first junction up here, zonia occludens, is a tight junction. It forms a belt all the way around there, and that prevents things from coming through, occluding. It occludes things from coming through. Below that we have the zonia adherence, that is the adherent components, and you see there's filaments associated with that, and that's what holds the cells together. Uh, and it too is a belt around it. And then you get the macular adherence, which are spot wells. These are macular adherent little spot wells, desmosome attachment. And then we have gap junctions. Here we see the gap junctions in through here for communication. So you have zonia occlutens to prevent things from coming in or going out into the lumen, and that's how you're able to make a sheet with epithelial cells because they make these tight junctions between adjacent cells, and then uh, also they form belt. So zonia adherence, zonia occlutens both form a belt, and then the macular adherence are just uh, spot wells, and then a the communication gap. We can see those again here: zonia occlutens, zonia adherence, and macular adherence. And we can see those again. The very first one is a zonia occlutens to prevent uh, things from uh, coming through, a zonia adherence, and the desposomal connections. The terminal bars, if this is intestinal absorptive cell, a simple columnar cell, here at the tight junctions at the surface, you can see really the terminal bars that we call them is what you can see at the light microscopic level, uh, is composed of these three junctions. You got the tight junctions, uh, the adherent junctions, and the, the desmosomal. These collectively together makes a little line that we can see, as you see. So this is one cell, another cell, another cell, and they're attached with these junctions at the surface. Now the different types of junctions, some of which are associated with filaments. Um, the uh, tight junction, occluding junction, it is not associated with a filament. It's a fusion of the plasma membranes of the two cells to prevent things from coming through. Uh, the adhering belt, the zonia adherence, is uh, connected uh, to the actin filaments, and the actin filaments are the same filaments that project up and push up the microvilli, and so it is associated with those. The desmosomes are associated with the intermediate filaments, or the keratin filaments, in the case of epithelium. 
And so the desmosomes, also those filaments attach to hemodesmosomes, which attaches the cell to, uh, to its base. So uh, the hemodesmosome, the desmosome, uh, and the zonia adherence uh, all are associated with the cytoskeletal components, either the microfilaments or the intermediate filaments. Uh, in the kidney, we can see there's a host of different cells. You can see those are cubed, one layer, simple, cuboidal, or maybe flattened. Here we can see that this is the renal corpuscle here, parietal epithelium, a simple squamous. Simple squamous here in this blood vessel, and then simple cuboidal in this uh, uh, nephrine. Uh, simple cuboidal cells are in the thyroid. This is a uh, follicle. Uh, a whole follicle and the follicular cells themselves are simple cuboidal, one layer, and cube cells. Uh, and also they have a basement membrane. Uh, all epithelium sits on the basement membrane. So several features of epithelium. One is avascular, doesn't have blood vessels. Uh, the blood vessels below it in the connective tissue is what supports it. You have extraneous cells. You have a lymphocytes that might be able to migrate through as you see. The uh, epithelium has an amazing ability to regenerate. Uh, if you have a burn and you still have sweat glands there, uh, the cells of the sweat gland can repopulate the surface. Uh, uh, since it's so easy to regenerate, 90% of your cancers are from uh, epithelium. And the cells can migrate. Uh, as I said, they can move and cover the surface if they were able to generate the cells from the sweat gland themselves. A characteristic of, of epithelium is a metaplasia. It can change its shape. Usually it goes from whatever type it is, like in the respiratory tract for a smoker, for example, it will change from uh, pseudostratified columnar ciliated cells uh, to uh, stratified squamous epithelium. Uh, yeah, stratified squamous is a protective type of epithelium and that's the one it goes to. Metaplasia, it can change. The basement membrane, here we see the basement membrane around these cells. There's also the basement membrane here uh, in the glomerulus uh, as well. Fresh water, but this is the basement membrane. All epithelium sits on the basement membrane. Now, uh, sometimes a glandular portions uh, discharge in ducts, and we call those extracon glands. That is, their liver secretions to an opening, some external surface, through a duct, and the pancreas has that. The pancreatic astral cells discharge its contents into a ducts, which ultimately go into the small intestines. But also the pancreas has an endocrine function, that is ductless, where uh, the cells migrate in, makes a duct, and the duct no longer is attached to the surface, or the cells does not have a duct at all. Uh, it doesn't have a duct. Uh, but the cells will migrate in through there and lose their connections with the surface, they discharge in the bloodstream. So instead of discharging in blood itself, they discharge in the connective tissue around it and it finds itself to the bloodstream. So exocrine has ducts, endocrine has no ducts. So in exocrine gland, you could either, the duct itself could be simple, if it's, that is it's unbranched, or a compound could be branched. Uh, and also the secretion portions are of different types too. Maybe they're a tube, maybe they're a coil tube, maybe it's a branch tube, and maybe it's alveolus, maybe it's a branch alveolus, maybe it's a tubular alveolar, uh, tubular alveolar, different combinations uh, that we can see in terms of the secretory portion versus the duct portions. If it's branched, it's compound, if it's not, it's simple. Uh, and we can see these, these are all simple because the duct portion itself is not branched. Uh, and here's a, a simple tube, coil tube, branch tube, multi-branch tube, alveolus, the different ones that we can see, branch, tubular alveolar. Uh, and here is a compound gland, which the, the duct itself, as you see here, uh, has branch. And in the duct you have a series of intercalated duct is the first duct and then uh, you get the underlibular ducts uh, going through. Now, there's two types of secretions of these glands. Um, the asnus is a, a group of cells with the lumen in the center um, and discharging in the center. 
this is in the extracurricular glands, uh, and the acinus is a functional unit. It's the one that produces the, uh, the smallest unit. We see an acinus right in through there. Um, and there could be mucus. Mucus is light staining cytoplasm, uh, and the nucleus is usually flattened and more at the base. And that's in contrast to the serous. Mucus versus serous. Serous is more proteinaceous uh, in secretion, uh, and the nucleus is more spherical, not flattened, but spherical, uh, and usually it's more red staining cytoplasm due to the fact that it's um, proteinaceous. Mucus, serous uh, secretions. Now, the submandibular gland, as we can see one of the salivary glands, uh, here we see the epithelium, this is simple. columnar epithelium, uh, which is part of the duct. And then as the duct gets more complicated, stratified columnar, more than one layer, and it still has columnar cells on its surface. But if you look at the glandular portion, you can see a serous and a mucus uh, component to us. Uh, and sometimes you see a serous and mucus together, where the serous is kind of on the outside of the mucus component, and we'll call that a serous demilume, serous demilume. Now, this, this clan is a mix, serous mucus clan, whose mode of secretion is American secretion. That is, exocytosis without the loss of cellular components. American secretion. And here we can see the American secretion. It's a typical exocytosis, something in the vesicle. The vesicle fuses with the plasma membrane and then discharges contents without loss of membrane. There's also an apocrine secretion. That is, some of the cytoplasm is lost, and we can see that here. Uh, and there's a holocrine secretion where the whole cell is lost. And this is what the sebaceous gland has. The whole cell is the secretion. There is one type, of, uh, another type of secretion. We call it cytokrine secretion. And this is where one cell, the melanocyte, produces granules for another cell, the keratinocytes. So when one cell produces something specific for another cell, this is cytokrine secretion. Merocrine is just exocytosis. Apocrine is some of the plasma membrane goes with it. Holocrine, the whole gizmo goes. And then cytokrine is where you produce a product for a specific cell type. Uh, in milk cells for mammary cell production, we see both merocrine. Uh, this is how casein gets out. So you get exocytosis to occur without loss of plasma membrane. In contrast, milk has lipid in it, and lipid is, is not water soluble. So you have to have a little bit of membrane around the lipid uh, that's discharged. So this is apricot. So a little bit of the membrane uh, surrounds the lipid whenever it is dis discharged. So the mammary cell uh, has both merocrine and apricot. A cytokrine is whenever melanocyte uh, produce melanin granules and they, uh, you see them budding off and they're giving them to the keratinocytes. So when you have a different color that you see of skin, it's in the amount of, of melanin granules that have been produced by the melanocytes passed on to the keratinocytes. Cytokrine secretion. Now if we look at the terminal ileum, we see a brush border. This is a brush border here. Here's a lumen. Terminal bars would be right in through the air. I don't see any uh, specifically, but they would be in there. Uh, and they have microvilli. Microvilli are finger-like projections that greatly increase the surface area of certain cells that help absorption. Intestine would be one of those. Uh, microvilli are non-modal. That is, they don't move. Uh, are composed of microfilaments called actin, so they have uh, actin filaments uh, inside there like we've uh, seen before. A goblet cell and intestinal absorptive cells. The intestinal absorptive cells are when it has a brush border. Uh, goblet cells also have microvilli. Most cells have microvilli, uh, but these have uniform size. The trachea has a different type of projection on its surface. It has cilia. Uh, so this is ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium with goblet cells. And here we see a goblet cell there. The main function 
of cilia is to sweep or move the fluid in cells of particular matter across the surface of the lumen to remove dust, as in the lungs. Uh, microtubules of the axonine are, is, is what makes up the core of cilia and that makes them modal. So you have an axoneme composed of micro, uh, microtubules as opposed to microfilaments uh, in, the, in the microvilli. Also you might note that the basement membrane is very, very thick in the respiratory pseudostratified columnar epithelium. In the epididymis, we have a little different type of projection on the surface of the cells. It's pseudostratified columnar epithelium with stereocilia. Now, microvilli are small, non-mobile, composed of microfilaments. That's what we've been talking about. Stereocilia are very long, non-mobile projected to increase uh, the surface area for absorption, composed of microfilaments, just like microvilli. Cilia, on contrast, are long, mobile uh, projections of, of a cell because it has uh, microtubules, microfilaments versus microtubules, and this one actually has an axoneme in it which allows it to move. Uh, the urinary bladder, uh, here we can see transitional epithelium uh, on the bladder, uh, basal cells at the base uh, that we see there, and kind of dome shape. Uh, surface cell looks like it's stratified uh, it is stratified but we don't call it that we call it transitional uh, here again we can see transitional epithelium connective tissue uh, below stratified squamous epithelium uh, is a protective epithelium as I mentioned to you and if it's on the outside of your skin it will be keratinized that is it's more dry uh, and more th thick skin that prevents desiccation, protects against uh, adhesion, it prevents foreign invasion, and we can see this is actually uh, a thick skin. Now, if it's in the oral cavity, uh, it's trying to find squamous, or it could be in the esophagus, it's non keratinized That is, the cells do not form uh, a stratic corneum uh, on, the, on the surface that, that is dry. Here we see the tongue. So that would be non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, connective tissue below. There's muscle that we see right here. Uh, and we can see uh, mucus and serous uh, secretions. The mucus are stained lighter, as we see here. And the serous uh, is more eosinophilic because of the protein being produced. More carbohydrates, more protein uh, in, in, in the serous. And the esophagus would be non-creatinized stratified squamous epithelium. So you have multiple layers as you see in through there. This is a thick, thick skin. The thick skin is noted by a very thick layer of the stratum corneum. So there are different layers, stratum granulosum there, stratum corneum uh, with the thick skin. And you might note uh, this is the, uh, the shaft the opening of the sweat gland which would discharge its contents there. So you have the epidermis, dermis, and the hypodermis is where you have the fat cell. The major function of this type of epithelium, thick skin, is one of protection from mechanical stress. So you slide in uh, to home plate and you don't lose your epithelium because uh, it's, it's strong, stout. But it also prevents dehydration. So there's multiple functions of skin. Thick skin, we can see the different layers uh, that we see. So at the base, you have cells that regenerate the epithelium. This is the source of the cells that then differentiate as they move uh, to the surface. So cells of the stratum basal, which is what here, is the stem cells uh, for the epidermis. Uh, and their progeny is what differentiates and ultimately is sloughed off. Uh, at the surface. Now, uh, thick skin, uh, connective tissue below, we see sweat glands in through there, connective tissue, we see fibroblasts, we see collagen, and around the uh, acron sweat gland, your typical sweat gland, you have myoepithelial cells, and here you can see the pink leaning of the myoepithelium. The myoepithelium is composed, uh, is eosinophilic, that is red staining, because or the presence of a high density of contractile proteins. It's muscle. 
epithelial type muscle. These cells surround the gland like a net uh, and squeeze out the secretion. Here you can see the myoepithelial cells surrounding the sweat gland. So these are the cells that produce the sweat and this is the myoepithelium net. Makes a little mesh around it to squeeze the secretions out. Uh, thin skin, uh, we can see a sebaceous gland. So this is a hair follicle in through there and this is a sebaceous gland. And remember that sebaceous gland has a holocrine secretion, namely the, the cell itself is discharged as a secretion. And uh, this is uh, in skin on the outside, so this is epidermis, so that's creatinized stratified squamous epithelium that we see. Now, if you are right at the anal junction, uh, you have mucus uh, cells give rise to stratified squamous uh, epithelium right at the anal opening at the perceive. And right along that uh, area, see the sebaceous glands on the outside, uh, outside of the anal area. And we also see the apricot sweat glands. Here we see it here, here, and here, uh, as opposed to the eccrine sweat gland. These are your typical sweat glands uh, for cooling. And this has to do with marking or something. And this one actually discharged in the hair follicle. We can see that here. The eccrine common sweat gland for cooling, it discharges on the surface of skin. In contrast, uh, the apricot auxiliary region, use the auxiliary region in humans, but it's functioning in animals as marking. And that discharges in the follicle itself. So if you want to mark something, it'll be useful to use the hair as a brush uh, to mark your, your scent. So we put together uh, a little table here of the different characteristics of a different type of epithelium. And this would be used as a, as a guide if you wanted to. Simple squamous, simple cuboidal, just characteristics and locations uh, of these. Uh, transitional, you have an excretory passage of urinary tract. So that's their little chart there, they help you uh, generalize uh, things. So epithelium are specialized for function, absorption in the intestines, pancreas secretion, transport in the eye, the endothelial cells and the blood cells is another transport, and for excretion, you got the kidney. For protection against mechanical uh, damage and dehydration, you got the stratified squamous epithelium with a creatinized uh, surface layer. Uh, sensory, you got sensory uh, nerves that, that go into the epithelium and also there are certain cells that they interact with those. Also the epithelium, you have taste buds, they are sensory. Olfactory cells, nerve endings to avoid pain. So sensory reception is one of the things that epithelium does. And also you have contraction. The myoepithelial cells contract to squeeze out the secretions. Now epithelium are specialized for certain things. You get microvilli or brush border uh, along the surface. Here we can see the terminal bars. And others have cilia, ciliated epithelium, uh, which has ciliated cells on the surface, which has microtubule axonine. And then all uh, epithelium uh, is sitting on the basement membrane. Uh, it's what we see. Uh, there's all the other modifications as well. There's intracellular canaliculus and hepatocyte. We'll see that in a minute. And uh, secretory canaliculus in, in the gastric gland. And also there's flagellum. It's another type specialization of epithelial cell. And here we see a sperm uh, tail with the axonine dense fibers of mitochondria. Here's a little sperm in through there. And this flagellum here is one of the modifications of the epithelial surface. Now, uh, one is the intracellular uh, canaliculus, and here you can see it. This is a bowel canaliculus. So in order to keep the blood separate from the bowel, you have to have a special little channel. And here you can see these channels here, and this shows you staining of the channels between the hepatocytes. In the test, in the case of the parietal cell produces hydrochloric acid in the stomach. The plasma membrane uh, has an enfolding deep within the cell. So the lumen, or the opening is, is continuous down in through here. This is called a secretory canaliculus, so that the cell can discharge its hydrogen uh, and its chloride uh, in through here, uh, so that 
so that it can make hydrochloric acid uh, in these spaces uh, and not interfere with what goes on inside of the cell. So these are different specializations that epithelia have. Now in terms of our clinical correlation, uh, the normal larynx has respiratory epithelium with ciliated cells. However, you can, like a smoker or in certain cases, uh, it becomes stratified squamous epithelium. So stratified squamous epithelium as opposed to a respiratory. Now the problem with this is that it doesn't have cilia to move the mucus out. And that's why a smoker has to cough his mucus out because the natural way of moving mucus with a ciliated cell action uh, has been compromised. And so uh, it still produces mucus, I still need to get it out, but they have to cough it out as opposed to the normal means of cleaning. The end. Hope you enjoy.